Fat pig or such like. Is it because of my big body or because I'm black? Is it because of my physical disability? It was signaled to me very indirectly. You just don't belong here. That's how it is. Fat people just don't belong here. Just arriving at some place, a semi-public place, like a doctor's, and seeing the chairs, and knowing if I sit on those chairs now, I'm going to be in pain. Or knowing I don't even fit in these chairs. The clothes thing too? Okay. Miriam works in Berlin city administration and has written a children's book about her experiences as an overweight woman. The title translates to Fat Girl Pinkapoo. Pinkapoo likes to wear bright colors and flower patterns and funny shoes. Pinkapoo can walk through the streets like that and think people are staring at her because of her clothes and not because she's fat. <laughs> I'd got all three of you the same skirts. And you look the happiest. Miriam is 50 years old today. She has a grown daughter. When Miriam was born, her weight was normal for a newborn. Today, she has a good relationship with her mother, but that was not always the case. Well, my eating was an issue from the beginning. First of all, my mother was always very slim, and because of that, I always felt like I was juxtaposed against her. I was the little fat girl, and she was the beautiful thin woman. You go shopping together, especially for clothes, and the sales clerks were always completely taken aback when I said, we're looking for something for my daughter. Then they'd say, oh, well, that's your daughter. That was a recurring situation. I started in daycare very, very early, at eight weeks, and I think I was just so overwhelmed with it all in general that food became a safe space for me because it had a comforting aspect zu einem Safe Space wurde, weil das so, so einen Fürsorgeaspekt gab. Immer wieder, over and immer again, wieder over and over, a voice would come from somewhere saying a fat pig or such like. Fette Sau oder armes Fahrrad oder irgend sowas. It's so important to them that they have to announce to the world that they find someone fat. I think the person who's fat is probably the person who knows that they're fat. It ruins any nice moment you're having. And then for that person it's over. But for mum perhaps, and definitely for me, it resonates for much longer. Classically, being fat is associated with being stupid or lazy or antisocial or whatever. It's like having a life where you have to crawl through a pile of sh** before the other person is willing to see you for who you are. And of course, that's not really fun. Fat shaming originated in an era of slavery, in colonial times. It was the image of a fat black woman who could perform, didn't ask questions, did a job. She was a mother producing children, as many children as possible, who could also then serve the system. It was the big black mama. Laya Okongo fights against fat shaming and for the acceptance of fat bodies, using art, texts and workshops like today with some art students. 
I started photographing my big disabled black body, making self-portraits and realized, okay, I'm learning for myself alone in my apartment to somehow accept this body, to find it beautiful, to reacquaint myself with it. Things where I thought, there are actually little paths. It looks like a map. There are scars there. And they have a right to be there. There were things I could discover which I don't normally allow myself to do when I look in the mirror. It was a huge, huge relief, the feeling I was liberating myself. Laya Okongo's mother is from Namibia. In 1978, during the Liberation War, she was severely wounded. She was pregnant with Laya at the time. Laya was born in the GDR with several disabilities. She developed splendidly, or maybe too splendidly? I was definitely one of the first black babies that this hospital saw. And there were definitely assumptions that I shouldn't get such a big mama body and that they should give me less milk. Which is also kind of sad when I think about it, to have already been on a diet as a baby. Your body shouldn't be fat. That's the message from birth onwards. Laia is one of the 46% of women in Germany considered overweight. It means she has a higher body mass index than 25. The percent of overweight men is as high as 60.5. While men can sometimes pass it off as being masculine, Laia, as a woman, experiences strong denigration. I often find people looking at me. If I was annoyed, I'd say staring. Sometimes I don't know where the rejection comes from. Is it because of my big body? My black body? Or is it my disabled body? It really annoys me. Their struggle against fat shaming isn't loud. There's no uprising of those who are fat shamed. Disapproval of heavier physiques is simply the social consensus. I notice it when it comes to getting appropriate seating space and how can fat bodies get medical care without immediately being told, but that's because you have a big body or because you're fat or be able to go shopping in the stores and not always having to shop online because the shops don't stock larger sizes. Then you have to stand spread out, shoulders wide, and I'll ask if you're ready, and then count down from three. Are you ready? And that's it. Now you can relax. Theatre director Katharina Bill is having a 3D scan. She wants to have a fat suit made of her body. A fat suit is a costume that thin actors wear to play fat people. My first experience with fat suits was when I was 20. I was an assistant director at the Schaubühne here in Berlin, a big theatre, and they used open fat suits to show how fat Americans are. And there were really, really bad situations that I still remember today. In the breaks, the actors couldn't always get out of the suit so fast. So they just quickly grabbed a roll, sat down at the table and started gobbling it down, making it as disgusting as possible and roaring with laughter, really mean laughter. And I sat there as a fat 20-year-old and thought, OK, wow, I'm still here, by the way. But I didn't say anything, of course. Oh well, if it's important. Yeah. 
Yes, it's important, because that's where the form has to go. We live in a society hostile to fatness. Fatness is vilified. Fat people are strongly discriminated against. So what happens when bodies that are considered very valuable, slim bodies, wear unworthy bodies? How much fat is funny? Are you ready? Three, two, one. So. Done. The thesis is... The idea is that because my body is fat, a suit is automatically a fat suit. And so it's the ambivalence in between that we're interested in. Costume designer Tatiana Couch will tailor the fat suit. Katarina wants to use it to shoot videos for social media. Four weeks later, Katarina's fat suit is finished. She's now wearing a second skin made of silicone. They're shooting today. The videos are voiced over with text that I read myself, with original quotes from interviews we've done with people who are involved with fat suits in some way. Something like, in this piece there is a lot of violence, and they want to portray that violence in a comically exaggerated way, with gender-neutral people who somehow embody something portly, content, lazy, full. The plan is for them to rip off each other's arms and legs and to have big blood stains everywhere. Heavier people are becoming increasingly visible, such as in advertising or on the social media channels of activists like Katerina or Laia. But these are still exceptions. In our everyday lives, fat people continue to be discriminated against. Personally, I wish for a society that can respond to my body as just one body among many others. Not a special one or a wrong one, and not a body that needs correcting. And I think that's a way in which we can reshape our ways of seeing. Ideally, I'd like fat people to have good lives and to have equal opportunities. I know a great many fat people who have very hard lives. You can pigeonhole people, you can do it for 80 years or so, but then you've never really got to know anyone either.